Hello everyone, it's Dave here, and today I have a tutorial on how you can do an Iron Man takeoff video. Um, I've, I did a test way back when, and uh, it was just a simple takeoff of Iron Man, and uh, I've been requested to do a tutorial. So in the spirit of the Avengers Age of Ultron, I have one for you now. So first things first, throw your subject in an Iron Man costume and put him in front of the green screen. And that's what we have here. Tilt the camera down and what this will do is it will simulate that Iron Man is uh, flying up. And for vice versa, you could tilt up and it'll show that Iron Man is landing if you would like to do that. So yeah, after you have shot that, you're going to shoot your background plate. Here it is. This was in the around the time of Christmas, as you can see. Just make sure you don't change the camera's uh, leveling, and uh, you should be good. Just take the camera and shoot what you want to put Iron Man in front of. Now import your two clips, and uh, as you can see, I have them right here. So yeah, I'll just go to the first one and set the in point. And just to let you guys know, obviously I'm doing this in HitFilm to Express. Although I recently purchased HitFilm 3 Pro, which I'm really excited about, and will be doing all my future tutorials in said software. So yeah, find the initial point where you want to uh, show Iron Man's takeoff, and uh, it's about there. Now set the out point. Uh, right about there. So yeah, now I'm going to make a new composite shot. Hit that, and I'm going to rename this Iron Man Takeoff. And import that clip. And now I'm just going to scrub along, making sure I have the entire shot I wanted in my comp. Everything's looking good. After I've double checked, now I want to key that green out. So I'm just going to go and grab a preset. So I won't be going into full detail here, but um, you get the idea just to grab the color difference key. So I'll just take this green screen key and it'll give me the chroma UV blur, the color difference key, and spill removal. So I'll just zoom in and make sure I have max set at, I think one is good, and the minimum 0.96. The green is fairly consistent. There's no real change in the shadings that's too drastic, so it'll make my life a lot easier. You can hit view matte, and as you can see what it does is it really allows you to see all of the green spill that's happening there, as you can see in the top left. So I'll just bring the gamma down a little bit to get rid of that. And maybe I'll change the minimum to 0.97 now. And that's looking really good, I think. So yeah, I'll just show you a before and after of the spill removal and chroma UV blur. I always like to have that on there. It just smooths out those rough edges. Now I want to mask out the subject from the rest of the shot. Just around the whole thing. And... As you can see, at the bottom left there, the hand kind of sticks out a bit, so we'll be dealing with that a bit later. No biggie. So now you want to scale to fit, and it's looking great. Let's go to find our background plate, and I'm just going to set the in and out points as I did previously. Now you just want to drag that into your comp, and as you can see, both the shots match up quite well. The lighting stayed fairly consistent so uh, yeah the next thing that I'm gonna want to do is grab my upper layer and uh, because it doesn't look the best with him centered in the frame like that I'm just gonna move him off center a little bit to try to follow the rule of thirds somewhat anyway <laughs> now I'm just gonna scrub through and as the camera starts to tilt down, we can see the mask we created is cutting off Iron Man. So we really don't want this. It's a big no-no. <laughs> so we're going to go and twirl open the shot, go under mask, and set keyframes for path. And let's move ahead a bit. 
And as it reaches the top there, we'll just move up the mask, making sure that our subject always stays within the boundary. And we can deal with the hand now, just making sure that uh, none of it intrudes the mask. Just keep going. And uh, I think that's looking good. I'll skip ahead here. I've imported a gunfire asset. I'll set the texture to, to assault rifle. And now we're going to track. So duplicate your uh, clip and go to tracker. And now I'm just going to uh, drag the red box over the hand there that we want to track. Making sure it covers the whole thing. I'll grab the green box, make it a little bit bigger, make sure it covers part of the shot there that uh, has more detail in frame. Hit play and it'll track forward. And after that's completed, now we can go under tracks, under tracker, go to tracking point one, and you can see all the keyframes there. So now we want to track back because we started it in the middle of the shot. So hit the backwards play button. And it will do the same thing, but in reverse. So we have the whole shot tracked, every detail, every frame. And then if you've noticed, it's staying very consistent with that hand. I'm hardly seeing any slippage at all, so we're looking really good there. And it looks like that is it. It's done now. We can close that. Let's just move ahead a bit, making sure that it has stayed connected perfectly where we want it. And yeah, we can go back to viewer and scale to fit. We're going to go to our right hand blaster and make it a composite shot. Hit convert. Go back to the comp and go to the beginning and now what we want to do is apply those tracking points so make new layer hit point I'm gonna rename it I'll call it right tracking point and after you've done that now we want to apply all that tracking data to that point so go to the shot that we tracked and uh, open up your tracker Go down to layer, select the point, and hit apply. Now all those points, and as you can see, the point is staying on the hand because we've just applied those points to this layer. So we want to parent the right hand blaster to it. And as you can see, it's staying on now because we've parented it, so it'll take on all of the changes in its position. Now, I just want to play around in the right-hand blaster gunfire layer, making sure that we have blended it. And um, I've sped this up because really it'll depend on your shot and what it requires. Just uh, play around with a few things until you've uh, got it looking fairly realistic. Now we want to apply it to the, the the feet. So go to gunfire, grab that, place it onto your composite shot. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it right foot blaster. Open that up, go to appearance, and I'm going to want to make some changes to the color. And I'll just select the wall, just the light from that lamp on that wall. It'll give it a nice warm tone. Drag that right under the foot. Drag that underneath 
your Iron Man layer. It'll look like it's coming from the foot. Open up the layer's appearance, and I'm just going to play around with the texture a bit. And uh, this is uh, completely dependent on what you think looks best. I think Tommy Gun will work. Now go to Barrel Gap, set that to 50, Length to 172, scale it up a bit, set the Jitter to 30, Intensity to 50, and you can play around with all those things. Go to Side Flares, Radius to 120 I think looks pretty good. And you can also play around with the primary number. Intensity, set that to about 60. It's almost the exact same thing I did for the hand blaster layers. Now create a new point. This will be the foot tracking point. And uh, yeah, now I'll apply all the foot tracking data to that point, And I'll parent the blaster to that point. But if we zoom in a bit here, I can you can see how none of the foot is affected by that bright light. So I duplicated both the left and the right foot blasters. And I put two of them over the shot. Of Iron Man, and as I uh, as I scrub along here, as you can see, it's much more intense over that foot, and it looks like it's consumed by the flames, which I really like. Yeah, you can go either or, but uh, I just think it adds a lot more, uh, a bit more realism. But now I want to add a couple beams of light coming from those eyes, like Iron Man would have in the films. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go to the Iron Man takeoff comp, go under new layer. And then hit grade. Now I'm going to rename it light rays, and that's the effect you want to drag in. Move it over directly, and then go under light rays, go to position, use layer, hand tracking point, and this will just take on all those keyframes that we set earlier. There's no need to uh, retrack anything. Duplicate it, and this will be for the left eye, so we have two, one for the right, one for the left. This will take some finessing, but hopefully you'll get it directly over top of the eye hole. Change the blending mode to screen. It'll just soften things up a bit. And uh, I think uh, it's blending uh, it's blending him in nicely with the shot. Just make sure you got that. And before and after, there you go. So yeah, now we want to do one for the chest blaster. So I'll just duplicate it and drag it down until it's covering that the arc reactor there and that's looking good we can increase the radius and intensity a bit because after all it would be more intense than those the little ones we did for the eyes so So yeah, now that we've done that, I would like to add a bit more light to the chest there. So we can go to light flares, drag that into the grade, and as you can see it's created right there. We can just drag that over, over top, and I'm going to change the flare type to flashlight white. It gives a nice little uh, horizontal flare happening there. Let's go to hotspot position, use layer, and choose the hand tracking point as we did previously. Drag it up and over top of the chest there. And yeah, as you can see, everything's staying connected extremely well so not really much else you need to do there now something I always like to do with any green screen shot is use light wrap it doesn't always benefit but uh, in this case I think it will so drag it onto your Iron Man layer now open it up and make the source layer your background plate. And 
And as you can see, it's uh, giving the Iron Man shot a nice ring light and that we you'd uh, actually expect to see from the two practicals in the background there. So just play around with the opacity and radius until you have something that looks pleasing. Now what I want to do is I want to color correct the Iron Man layer into the background. So open up color correction, go to color correction wheels, drag that on, now open it up. And we have our three wheels in highlights, midtones, and shadows. Uh, play around with uh, pushing the little dot there and to get what you think looks right. And as you can see, it's already looking a lot better fits a lot better but I think I'm gonna go back and uh, make the midtones a little more of a orangish yellow highlights mm, I'm not really liking that they feel like they're almost a little cooler so I can make that a cyan just pull it back a little bit I'm liking that and now we can go to our master controls and change the exposure as it wasn't quite correct it was a little bright earlier, and now I'll show you before and after. You can close that. So that's all the color correction needed. We'll, uh, we'll scroll up here, and uh, we can uh, turn on all the light rays and the flare. I'm just going to go to the right foot blaster here and uh, make a change th to the opacity because I feel like it... Uh, it takes too much up and you still want to be able to see that foot you just want kind of the light to kind of wrap around it and uh, consume it but not uh, overtake it because uh, that it, it just it, it's a bit more realistic this way now we're almost done and uh, it's looking pretty good I think we can go to new layer hit grade I'm gonna rename it this is gonna be the camera shake now this is optional but I just like it I think it uh, creates for a more engaging shot and uh, a bit more intense too the shake amount can go to 20 I don't want it to be too intense and uh, you can play around with the Y shake and X shake and uh, the tilt motion blur I'll leave that to 0.10 samples to like 30 we can trim that down to fit I'll uh, paste in my grade and uh, make sure it's over your shot and now yeah now we're pretty much Ready to export, I'll just scrub through one more time looking at everything that we did. And uh, I think that's looking great. So if once you have that double checked, we can head over and go to export. And yep, you can just hit export. I'm going to name it Iron Man Takeoff. Now export it, and we have this. So, yeah, I hope you guys liked that tutorial and uh, hope you found it useful and have busted out your own awesome looking Iron Man Takeoffs. So, um, leave a comment and like if you enjoyed. And if you want to stay in touch and you want to get more videos like this hit subscribe and tell me what i should do next hope you guys have a good one i made it's dave and i'll see you on my next video bye